Hello and welcome to the peatlands. In the previous video we saw how to perform a drop shatter test. Now we would like to look at how the degree of humification is determined. The degree of humification uses a 10-tiered scale to describe the state of decomposition of peat material. This scale was introduced by the Swedish geologist Lennart von Post in 1924. Since then, the humification scale has become a standard method used worldwide for examining peat soils. In order to identify the degree of humification on the von Post scale, a squeeze test needs to be performed. This test, however, can only be used for wet peat that is largely unaffected by secondary processes induced by drainage. For dried compacted peat that is strongly altered by secondary soil formation processes, an alternative method was developed, which we will look at later. But first, more about the von Post squeeze test. For this method, you need a fresh, wet peat sample from the horizon you are examining. This can be taken from the monolith, the profile wall or from a peat core. For the squeeze test, you need a peat sample which fits well in a closed hand. Usually, this piece is about as big as a chicken egg. Depending on the size of the hand, the sample can be somewhat smaller or larger. What's important is being able to close the hand around the sample properly. The sample hand forms a fist and is held vertically. The other hand will be cupped and held below it. Then the peat sample is squeezed hard. Water or peat material will flow out between the fingers. In the hand, a sample residue will stay behind. In order to determine the von Post degree of humification, in Germany a table from the soil mapping guidelines is used, translated by Schultz and colleagues. For each sample, a score can be allocated between H1, undecomposed, and H10, completely decomposed. For this, three attributes are used. First, you need to observe what exactly flows out between the fingers when the sample is squeezed. Second, the consistency and composition of the sample residue is assessed. Third, the recognizability of plant remains in the peat should be observed. This attribute should not be examined before the sample is squeezed, but rather in the sample residue after squeezing. Why this is better will be explained shortly. This column should therefore be moved to the right. Now let's look at some examples. We will now focus on bog soils. Here is a piece of sphagnum moss peat. Let's see how it does. When squeezed, only colorless clear water comes through. The sample residue is firm, not mushy. And the plant remains in the sample residue are perfectly identifiable, without any fine amorphous substance in between. All this leads to an H1 on the von Post humification scale. This is what undecomposed white peat looks like. Between H1 and H4, there is only little visual difference in the peats. All plant remains in the samples are identifiable. The consistency also remains the same, not mushy. What changes is the turbidity of the outflowing water. For H2, the water is yellow-brown, almost clear. For H3, it is brown and murky. And for H4, it is brown and very murky. As a comparison, here is an example of an H4 peat from a fan soil. This is sedge peat, also called radisil peat. Brown, very murky water. A firm, non-mushy sample residue and consisting of identifiable plant remains. And now, back to bog peat. With the humification score of H5, not only murky water flows through the fingers, the peat material also starts flowing outwards. Typically, some peat will peak out from the top and the bottom of the hand. The sample residue is slightly mushy and plastic. The plant remains are generally still identifiable, but some amount of amorphous fine matter is also visible. At age 6, up to one third of the peat flows out after squeezing, especially out of the top and bottom of the hand. The residue is very mushy and the plant remains are already somewhat indistinct. Now we'll jump ahead to age 8. 
In this category, about two-thirds of the peat comes out through the fingers. The sample residue now mainly consists of especially decay-resistant remains. But the plant remains in the peat material are already very indistinct. This is a typical black peat. At age 9, almost all of the peat is squeezed through. The sample residue is similar, but the plant remains are now hardly recognizable. Finally, if all of the peat can be squeezed out and the plant remains are completely unrecognizable, we will have an H10. Here are some important additional tips for identifying the degree of humification. First, before you squeeze a sample, look for any strong recent roots or coarse wood pieces and make sure you remove them. The degree of humification describes the peat matrix, not the woody components. 2. The Von Post squeeze test should be carried out with clean hands. Dirty hands can bias the results. For slightly decomposed peat samples, the turbidity of the water will then be higher than it should be. So have a bucket of water and a cloth with you for washing your hands. 3. The color of the peat is not decisive for the Von Post humification scale. Slightly humified peat is often lighter, but not in every case. So, do not decide based on the color of the peat, but rather based on the three criteria we just presented. 4. The most important criterion refers to the water or the peat that flows through the fingers. The consistency of the sample residue usually fits well with these properties. Based on these two attributes, this sample would be an H4. However, sometimes the characteristics of the plant remains can diverge. When this attribute diverges by at least two points, you can adjust by raising or lowering the final score by one point. In this case, we end up with an H5. 5. The recognizability of plant remains before squeezing can be misleading. In strongly decomposed peats, the plant remains can sometimes still be relatively well recognizable before squeezing. But the peat is so soft that when squeezed, the structures disintegrate and the material is pushed out through the fingers. Therefore, you should evaluate the plant remains only after squeezing the peat sample. And 6. Peat that has been strongly altered by secondary soil formation is often too dry or too compacted for the Von Post squeeze test to work. This is generally the case for peats from earthified, strongly earthified, plowed and re-aggregated horizons and also for most aggregated horizons. Such material must be evaluated based on the proportion of recognizable plant remains and its color. For this, we have the humification degree table for dry peat. This is how dry samples can also be scored on the Von Post scale. The color characteristics in the table are mostly only valid for bog peat, so this criterion is of secondary importance. The given proportions of recognizable plant remains can also be used as a calibration tool when examining wet peat samples after squeezing. So this column, which can also be found in the German soil mapping guidelines, is generally very practical. Now we know how to identify the degree of humification in peat. Here again is a summary of the complete procedure. In the next video, we will look at how to differentiate between earthified and strongly earthified peat. See you soon!